Wow, so homunculus. This is without a doubt one of the most bizarre, intricate, depressing, yet sometimes uplifting, raw looks at the human condition and society as a whole. How we relate to that society around us, and what values we place on particular things that we believe will give us the most amount of pleasure. Right off the bat, I'll say that Homunculus deals with some pretty heavy adult themes. Obviously, it's a seinen manga, but when it comes to past traumas, sex, dynamics between men and women, repressed memories, and many other things that can only be truly appreciated by people that understand that this has adult things to say. But then at the same time, there are some images that are so ridiculously absurd that I find myself laughing at them even though the topic at hand might be quite heavy. And maybe that was part of the intent, or maybe the intent is just to get an overall physical reaction from the reader. Whatever the case, I think Homunculus has some really profound things to say, despite having some incredibly over-the-top and wacky imagery that may potentially take you out of the story because of it. This review is going to be as spoiler-free as I can make it, but I will have to give away a few details about the overall nature of the story in order to even be able to talk about it. So if you want to know nothing at all whatsoever, then maybe save this review for later, but if you want to hear a little bit about what this series has to offer, then continue watching the video. First, let's get the general synopsis out of the way. Susumu Nakashi is our main character, and we begin the series with him being homeless, living in his car. Though he loves his car to the point where he has this almost sixth sense to know everything that's wrong with it, even before opening the hood. And this leads into why he is the perfect candidate for awakening his latent ability. Along comes this man named Manabu, who offers Susumu a bunch of cash if he accepts to undergo an experimental procedure called trepidation. And this is something that actually exists, where they drill a hole into your skull to alleviate some pressure on your brain. It's extremely dangerous, but here in the story, Manabu believes that it will restore the brain to a more primal state of perception, like that of a newborn, without the influence of societal pressure or anything else. To be able to take things in without any kind of filter. Susumu manifests this ability into being able to see homunculi, which put simply are ordinary people experiencing deep psychological trauma. And when Susumu covers his right eye, he sees this distorted physical representation of what these traumas are doing to people, with no explanation of what it could mean. His first major encounter involves a Yakuza boss whom he envisions as a robot, clearly meaning a man going through the motions and hiding something deep within a deep regret that he had buried, or a teenage girl made up of symbols, someone who feels hollow made up of everything other people are telling her to be, whether it's the perfect little student from her parent, or the sex object that she's becoming for men, as she's in this transitional phase from child to adult and at a loss for identity in between these two worlds. Now as these storylines go on, I was pretty much thinking that this series was going to feature Susumu going from person to person that he encounters being able to see their psychological damage manifested physically and basically serve as a supernatural therapist and help them release their trauma outwardly. I mentioned this in my first impressions video, but trauma energy is something that is held within our bodies physically. If you go through a bad experience, especially as a child, it gets locked within us if it's not dealt with, and at some point we need to release these traumas, and we do so physically. The body and the mind are not so separate. It all works as one. You can't think your way out of a psychological problem, you need to express it physically. Speaking of expressing things physically, let's talk about the elephant in the room, and that has to do with cum eating. <laughs> So the only thing I knew about this series before starting it was that the main character uh, at some point eats his own cum. And yeah, that, that happens. Actually, there's a lot that happens with cum in this story, and it's, it's kind of strange. And I do think it does have to do with physical expression. Look, as gross as you prudes might think it is, it's what creates life, our essence, our DNA. A connection that happens when transferred or consumed or becoming one with each other. And what happens towards the middle of the series is that it starts to delve much deeper and focus on Susumu himself as a character. And this guy is way more fucked up than many of the other people that he encounters. Clearly, he's sitting in his car eating his own cum. As well, we can start to realize that the homunculus that he is seeing are not just dealing with their own baggage, but due to the very nature of it being what he sees, they are his own interpretations. And even more so than that, they are his reflections. 
Sometimes we hate people who are similar to us because we see an aspect of ourselves within them that we refuse to acknowledge about ourselves. Sometimes we can solve somebody else's problem so easily because it's a problem we've yet to solve in our own life. Sometimes by understanding another person, we learn things about ourselves that we didn't even know. And this is where there's a bit of a divide in how Susumu is portrayed as a character. Because on the one hand we understand him, but on the other he is so focused on himself and how he understands the homunculi. So is it that he wants to help other people, or is it that by helping them he discovers more about himself? Attributes of them are rubbed off on him, a transference similar to what I mentioned before, but then you can't be given something that wasn't within you to begin with. If you take somebody's negative energy, it is then on you to release that in your own way, or else the energy itself will attach to whatever negativity is already within you and become even heavier. That's what I believe in any case. Like, have you ever had a moment in your life where somebody yelled at you or broke down in front of you, and then maybe a few hours later you yell or break down yourself? It's like you absorbed that person's energy and then released it later on. But if you don't release it, it assimilates with you, and that negativity goes to wherever you had your own negativity prior. Homunculus also delves into the idea of repressed memories. When it comes to the character of Manabu and the things that he experienced within his early childhood that he had buried, and only through acting things out physically was he able to open up to reaching those buried memories. He had to accept a part of himself that he was refusing. Susumu helps him with this, and yet again an aspect in him helping was also so Susumu could face a part of himself. But I do have to say that the Manabu segment in the middle of this manga is kind of adorable and wholesome as hell, which is saying a lot considering the majority of this manga is pretty damn dark. But like I was saying, the crux of this manga is dealing with the history of our main character and how he sees reflections of himself in everybody that he encounters, which is really what we all do. We view people through particular lenses, and it's all based on our own life journey and experience. We put everybody into categories and boxes all the time, all the while we are trying to strive for what we deem as valuable. But then again, what we deem as valuable has only been enforced by our surroundings and our conditioning, so what do we really value? We want somebody to see our true self. Beyond the mask that we painted or the life that we built, we want someone to look into our hearts and see us for us. In essence, we want someone else to see our homunculus. Someone see me as I truly am, not as the presentation. But the sick twisted part of that is, we don't want just anyone to see us. We want someone that we see as valuable to see us as genuine. It's so messed up. Basically, for a shy, ugly, broke man, who may be a quote, good person, wants to be seen as such, but only by the hot and beautiful manic pixie dream girl, not the other ugly, undesired girl counterpart of his. The rawness of the ending of this manga points the finger at our hypocrisy as humans and this lack of connection due to our own reluctance to see past what we should want. Even if making the money, getting the women, and having the career is going well, it will mean nothing if it doesn't align with your heart. The manga ramps up and ends in such a bizarre, twisted, and probably unintentionally hilarious way. Honestly, I was laughing way too hard at this final sex scene, and if you read it, you know what I'm talking about. And I couldn't help but wonder if this connection and bliss was meant to be so self-serving that it actually became pretentious, but in a meta way. Whereas the author was trying to be pretentious and jack himself off a bit because that's kind of what's happening with the character <laughs> in more ways than one, I, I honestly don't know. But overall, I do have to say that I really enjoyed this series. Despite its over-the-top and at times self-indulgent nature, I think that there's a lot of wonderful things here to explore about the human mind and about how we ourselves manipulate things in order to understand them. How we see others as a reflection of ourselves and how we deny looking inward to try to change everything on the outside. Or how we neglect the responsibility of releasing things physically. Basically what this manga says is that human beings are really fucked up. We are monsters. We are homunculi. But we have the potential to see it and maybe understand it, and with that maybe try to better it. And it is a big maybe. As in most cases, we become so obsessed with how others view ourself that we become hollow or robotic, or just a blank slate barely able to remember who we are. 
this manga makes us face some of these brutal truths, and this is why I would highly recommend that you check out Homunculus. Also, if you like eating your own cum, that's okay. It's not that bad. Thank you a lot for watching this video, guys. I really do appreciate it. I definitely did enjoy this series. Leave other manga recommendations down below. And if you haven't checked out Homunculus yet, if it seems like something that might be up your alley, go ahead and give it a shot. It's 15 volumes, so it's not too terribly long. And I enjoyed it quite a bit. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like, comment down below, share it with other people you think would enjoy it. Check the links in the description for my Twitter, Instagram, Discord, Patreon, and all that fun stuff. Other than that, guys, I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you next time.